Welcome in to Sky Ridge High School and the Sky Ridge Tournament. Game three of the opening round. Sky Ridge preparing to take on the Crimson Cliffs Mustangs. Thank you for joining us, everyone. My name is Dane Stewart. Please be joined by Andrew Blanchard, former coach, now administrator. Coach, we've got an interesting matchup, 4A versus 6A. And uh, two really good coaches going head-to-head today, and Coach Gardner and Coach Kent Fairborn. Yeah, I'm excited to see uh, kind of the game that game plan that they both come up with to see who who can get after it tonight early you know i think transition is going to be a big uh key for for sky ridge uh tonight we'll start by introducing the visiting or designated visiting crimson cliff mustangs two and one on the season and this is a group they've got a lot of guys that can score the basketball you look at the 6-4 senior jordan eaton averaging 18 and 7 luke johnson phoenix mcwillis both averaging 10 plus per game the offense has been really good. They've scored over 70 in two of their three games. And uh, when you think about Sky Ridge, Coach Gardner always does such a good job defensively. He's having to play so much offense with a bunch of new faces, Mason Hunter, J.J. Jory, and a familiar name in Jordan Kohler. I'm excited to see the young sophomore tonight. Yeah, I can't wait to see uh, some of the wrinkles that, that they both are going to be putting in today in the offense. You know, they've been pretty structured with a lot of set plays. But just kind of seeing uh, Sky Ridge over the last summer, you know, I've seen a lot of transition and uh, kind of up-tempo play. So it'll be interesting to see how they come out tonight. Both these rosters have a fair amount of youth on them. It'll be interesting to see that youth over the course of the next couple years as both these programs continue to grow as they compete for region and state championships. Sky Ridge wearing the home white uniforms, Crimson Cliffs in the road reds. And I love the new look for Sky Ridge. And I, this is the first time I've ever seen the Crimson Unis. But two solid uniform combinations yeah, tonight. They, that, they do look good. Like that burnt orange for Sky Ridge. Opening tip. And we've got an early whistle here. I think maybe the shot clock didn't start. Coach, how much do you wish that you could coach in the shot clock era? <laughs> or do you wish that, are you glad you didn't? Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's well documented on my ability to want to draw out the game a little <laughs> bit uh, with some stall ball <laughs> tactics. Maybe I learned that from my good friend Jeff Gardner, but um, it's it really is an advantage to some of these teams uh, that do set plays like Sky Ridge. Crimson so Cliffs. I wish I could. <laughs> yeah. Looking inside, good start. That is Jordan Eaton, a 6'4 senior, with a nice turnaround there in the paint. And we've got uh, being whistled here at the table. I think still working on some clock issues, I believe. You know, it's funny with the, the shot clock. It, you really don't notice it very much until you're, you're at the end of the quarter or definitely in the fourth quarter where you just don't have as many, um, you know, dead ball fouls and having to foul to shoot free throws. So it's going to be really nice to see, you know, Gardner with Sky Ridge is going to be really intentional uh, tonight where he's going to try to slow pace with maybe some three-quarter court, half-court stuff to kind of slow the uh, Crimson down um, in the in the full transition game. Of course, Coach, it's so weird to think that you're at Mountain Ridge now. I mean, I'm or at Harriman. My apologies. Boy, I'm surprised yeah, you didn't slap me across the back of my that's head That's a there. rivalry right there. It's so weird to think you're at Harriman, but you know, you guys have had the shot clock installed since like day one. Yeah. It's been sitting there, just been waiting for us it, to be able to turn it on. So. You're right. Yep, they're re- we've been ready. First Sky Ridge possession. There's a lot of new faces on this Sky Ridge roster. Cannon Jensen sends this out. Three on the way, and that one good. Made by Tate Van Komen. You're going to see a lot of that tonight with Sky Ridge. There's a lot of ball screen, drawn kicks. Um, so they better be ready for their, their ball screen defense. And an offensive foul here called on Crimson Cliffs. And, boy, good mechanics. Look like he's been practicing that one in the mirror. Yeah, definitely. Little Dykes definitely in his in his bedroom uh, looking at the mirror while he's doing his, his calls. We had sure. a good conversation with Courtney before <laughs> the game. Another three on the way. And it's Jory again. Back-to-back threes for Sky Ridge. Well, I, if they're going to shoot like that tonight, it's going to be a long road yeah. for Crimson. That three on the way from Eaton off the mark. Loose ball gathered by Skyridge. Look out. Oh, I thought it was going to be a heat check Another moment. One. Jensen will dial it up. 
So there's that transition, that secondary transition game that Skyridge does so well. They don't really have numbers, but they're going to push that ball up the up the court from free throw line to free throw line, which be, is really nice. Oh, good movement there to get the ball to Eaton on the run through the screen. Good response there for Crimson Cliffs. Boy, the way that Skyridge is shooting, this is like remnants of Nick Holland. Yeah, <laughs> a little backdoor action. Good help there defensively as Hunter's shot was denied. So you're going to see a little slip here, number two. There's that slip to an action. That's the old Andrew play, Copper Hills Grizzlies. He still that from you? Uh, we all steal from each other. <laughs> so. <laughs> you know, it, we've had Jeff join us for a couple games, and he's been like you. All right, here's the inbound. Watch this. And yeah. I mean, it's like you guys all know exactly what's coming. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah, it's just tough to stop it sometimes. Boy, the jumper there from Phoenix McWillis using the glass. What contact there? Is this deflected out? It'll stay here. I'll tell you, Jordan Eaton, he, he brings some physicality. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he's a big, strong kid. Yeah. Kind of looks like Thor out there with the hair <laughs> bun. Looks tough. This is Mason Hunter back out with Housley. Little Princeton action here. Over with Jensen. Jensen running away from the screen there. Whistle here before the shot. As the first foul, or second team foul here on Crimson Cliffs. That'll be given to Luke Johnson, his first. Substitution for Skyridge. Cy Hansen coming on the floor. Oh, three on the way. That one was long. Taylor with the board and Crimson pushing it up the floor. Spin back to the middle. Too strong on the take. Rebounded by Skyridge. That was a good take. Just uh, a little unfortunate on the back iron, though. It's a good dribble spin. Entry here with Hanson. Trying to work the post. Help coming over. Wanted to lay that off to Hunter, but good defense there by Crimson. Transition three off the front of the rim. Good reach there to keep it. Houston Johnson with it here. Oh, that's a good take. Nice little floater. Yeah, that's the 6'8 senior center, Houston Johnson. He's got some good length to him. I like his game a little bit. Hanson with a quick response there for Skyridge. Ball worked out. McWillis hands that off. Into traffic. No whistle. And Skyridge pushing tempo here. Great help side defense by by number one there, Mason Hunter. That one turned over. McWillis oh. on the run and oh. offensive foul. You know, the charge call is like the most favorite call in Utah. Um it's just insane how many charge calls are called during a game. Obviously, I think that was a charge, but um, the, um, the amount of charges that are called in Utah is just insane. They love that action. You know, you can see Courtney, he's going to get one of those today too. High post in action. Long three. Right off the mark. Yeah, so you're going to see Skyridge attack those elbows and come off those down screens with that Princeton action. It's good stuff. He's been doing that for over a decade now. I feel like Jeff, boy, his his team, they're really pushing it up the floor. They're moving very quickly. You talk about being deliberate, and I feel like, you know, you know they've been purposeful, but, man, I haven't – I don't feel like we've seen him really, hey, point guard, middle of the floor, like get into something that's been just move, 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 move. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're definitely like that ball not sticking in, in each other's hands. So um, that's usually a pretty typical Jeff Gardner coached game. What's it like to coach against Jeff? Well, he's going to know all your plays a lot better than you do. Number that's 10, a nice pull a up. And that is Eaton again. He's got six points here in the early going for wow. Crimson. 
Yeah, I mean, going against him, he's going to know every single set, and he's going to call him out by name and his players. He's very intentional on knowing what you're going to be doing and what your strengths are. Oh, Eaton for three again. Good contest there. Wow. Made it a challenge. But it's fun. It's fun going against those teams. Boy, a bay three for Jory. That's his third of the contest. He is filling it tonight already. And a timeout taken here by Crimson Cliffs. 2.41 to go. Skyridge with the lead. You're watching the Skyridge Tournament live on kslsports.com. Welcome back. Crimson Cliffs basketball. Coach Fairborn there taking the timeout. Coach Blanchard, I mean, based on the start, J.J. Jory, three threes. I mean, is that something where Crimson making a defensive adjustment here on a better closeout? or? Yeah, I think they've definitely got to keep, uh, not do a full help side on him. They've got to do a little no help, no cover until he cools down. Johnson, or excuse me, that was uh, Sean Feltz just had that jarred loose and Skyridge, that defense. Boy, they're hounding Crimson yeah. here. One way to cool, cool Jory down is put him down on the bench there, Jeff. You know? Let him... Oh, he's got to throw some digs at my old coaching friends. <laughs> That's why we like to bring you guys on. <laughs> Always fun to see some of the behind-the-scenes stuff and even hear some of the stories and interactions that you all have had. And Look, it's a great community. I think all the coaches really respect each other. And Yeah, absolutely. It's... Uh, awesome to be able to get to know you guys individually and give fans a little bit of an experience as to what you guys are all like as well yeah here's hunter giving that with van coleman blocked away good close out by Feltz. here's drake carroll the sophomore eaton trying to work baseline throws that up tipped away Ooh, might have gotten away with the walk there. Yeah, it certainly looked out of rhythm. Yes. And there's that transition game. They're really going to push the floor tonight. Hard hedge off ball screens. Oh, Again, they get it to Eaton. Man. That's one where, for me, I'm like, boy, that's not – the shot I would want, and yet he drills it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was a tough shot, and he put it in the bottom of the net. Substitutions here for Crimson. McWillis coming on and still Barman coming on. Meanwhile, Jory checking back in here for the Falcons. Still Barman had a fantastic year this year as the quarterback for Crimson Cliffs. And he gets the task of defending Jory. Drive here by Jensen. He'll send out. This is Fryans. Driving, hanging, and won't go. Little freshman looks like he's pretty fearless. Looking inside, good find. And that's scored by Jay Sweeten. As we're tied up. Good response here from Crimson Cliffs. Two-second differential game clock to shot clock here. Van Coleman trying to post on the inside. Instead, they work out with Davis. Five on the shot clock oh. on the drive by Fryan. Sends out Jory. Extra pass. Davis for three straight away. No good. Barbin comes away with it. And that will do it for the first quarter. 14 apiece. Crimson and Skyridge tied up. After one, you're watching the Sky Ridge Tournament live on kslsports.com. Welcome back. Start of the second quarter here. Crimson Cliff Sky Ridge tied at 14 apiece. KSL Sports Rewind brought to you by Heidemann Associates. If you have any legal needs, contact the experts at Heidemann and Associates. Tell them the Rewind sent you, and you'll get a free consultation. Just call 801-754-4240. Dane Stewart, Andrew Blanchard here with you. First quarter, Andrew, anything stand out to you in this contest? Well, I think it's two really evenly matched teams. Um, 
obviously it, it seems like uh, Jordan Eaton is really getting going. And then for, for Sky Ridge, uh, it's Jory, number 30, who's been shooting it really well. So I think it's going to come down to executing here um, and, and finishing plays at the rim. I'll tell you, early on, Sean Feltz has made his defensive presence known. A couple blocks. Yeah. As we've got a foul here, going to be called on Crimson. It'll stay here. That foul given to McWillis, and that'll be the fifth team foul, I believe. Uh, maybe just fourth. McWillis picking up his second. He'll have to head to the bench. Jory. Had that hot start. Hasn't had a shot since. Yeah, they've really looked to, to close. You can see that no help side on Jory right now. They're just making sure he doesn't get any open looks. Boy, and Feltz there again defensively to make that shot for Hanson difficult. As Crimson gets the stop, up come the Mustangs. Another hard hedge by Sky Ridge. They're not going to let Crimson come off the edge and turn the corner to get to the rim. They're going to make him do those types of plays on the roll last touch by Skyridge it'll be Crimson to inbound here off the screen there he is man of, what a ball game one of my biggest pet peeves you're a defensive under under the basket you got to have your guy that's guarding the guarding the ball to be under the hoop to protect that backside you see that defense collapse down there on the drive help create the dual possession the arrow will give it back here to Crimson Cliffs Substitution is, I think Fry is just coming back on here for Skyridge. Here's Eaton. Ten points already. Barbin around that screen. Too much space. And yep. Eaton makes him pay. Well, he's got it going in this first half. There's no doubt. I mean, they got to tighten it up on him a little bit. 13 of the 19 coming from Jordan Eaton. Oh, boy. Nice back door. Yeah, just couldn't get it there. Crimson's really collapsing down on the interior, Andrew, making those passing lanes virtually non-existent. Yeah, they've got to, you know, Skyridge has got to find a way to stretch the floor without ha – it being Jory making the threes. They've got to have somebody else step up and hit some shots so it can kind of open up the space inside. Foul there was called on Jay Sweeten, his first. Fifth team foul on Crimson Cliffs. We'll send Cannon Jensen to the line as he makes the first. Hockey subs for Crimson. Yeah, McWillis back on. And I don't know that Jordan Eaton's come off the floor. Yeah, I don't know if I'd I'd be taking him out very yeah, often. Right? <laughs> Here's Johnson. McWillis trying to penetrate. Boy, tough drive and draw on the contact. Phoenix McWillis, the 6'5 senior, will head to the line. Yeah, he showed some athleticism to get downhill there and kind of moved the ball around so he didn't get blocked. So that was a good take. Young man talked about in the open average in 10 a game. Is, makes his first free throw there. Just the second team foul on Skyridge in this first half. Yeah, you know, you'd like to see your teams be a little bit more on your foul count. You know, obviously... You want to be closer to four or five if you're playing physical. So as a coach, you kind of took the philosophy of if we're not getting calls, then we can maybe up the physicality a little yeah. bit more? Yeah, absolutely. Uh-oh. Oh, back iron. Rare miss. Yeah, we definitely, if we only had two team fouls with four minutes, five minutes left in the first half, we, we certainly looked at that as not being physical enough. Boy, a couple, so, couple big offensive rebounds here for Crimson to keep the ball on the offensive end. 
Yeah, those are going to hurt young teams like Skyridge. You know, if you give up too many offensive boards for second and third opportunities to score, typically teams are going to take advantage of that. Five-point lead for the Mustangs. Eaton. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, lost it. That one kind of threw the wicket. Still here with Skyridge. His drawing contact was Hanson. And he'll head to the line. A rare kind of miscue for Eaton there. I mean, the, the turnover and then kind of got caught like, oh, shoot, they're going to run. And Yeah, he's he needs to make sure he stays out of foul trouble um, for this game. You know, it seems like Crimson really needs him to be in the game. Just his first, sixth team foul on Crimson. So Skyridge will be shooting the rest of the way as Boy Camp capitalize on the free throws and the rebound captured by the Mustangs. Here's McWillis sending over, three on the way. Skipped across and rebounded by Hunter. Mason, boy, that's a tough look against Johnson. Yeah, I don't think Jeff Gardner is going to be happy about that take right there. Need to show a little bit more patience coming in transition. I mean, how about 6'8", Houston Johnson, 6'9", Sean Feltz. That's some good length for yeah. this Crimson team. Yeah, they've got good size, as, as big as any other teams that really I've seen, especially at the 5A classification. Is it 5A? 4A. 4A, excuse yeah. me. Yeah, they, they've got good size at the 4A. Another offensive rebound. Another board. Man, just living off the glass, and it's eaten with the putback and a timeout taken by Skyridge as right now, my goodness, Crimson Cliffs taking it to the Falcons. Yeah, I think it just comes back to that to that physicality, right? Where they're not you gotta be able to box out and get a rebound. Yo, did you see the Dixie game right before this? Yeah. Dixie has a lot of length too. And when you think about four A and you think about basketball down south, I mean Snow Canyon, obviously Lyman Simmons moving up, that's a big loss for that yeah. program. But yep. Dixie, Crimson Cliffs, I mean their rosters just don't look like 4A rosters. No, no, and, and those schools are, you know, they're big schools. So, um, you know, they've got some big boys down the, down south there and and uh, look like they're, they're, they got some good teams. We've had some great teams here in this Sky Ridge Tournament. Game three of the day, Lone Peak took care of Harriman early. Dixie and Farmington, what was a great back-and-forth contest. Farmington ends up getting the double-digit win. We got one more coming up for you. Out to taking on Copper Hills, and uh, no longer the coach of Copper Hills, but obviously still a lot of ties with that staff and that program. Uh, coach Blanchard will be joining us for that one as well. As great teams participating here at the Sky Ridge Tournament, and we've got action for you today, tomorrow, and Saturday. Come on out, watch some great basketball between teams that will be in the mix in their respective classifications. Absolutely. Excited to see basketball this weekend. It'll be fun, fun weekend here at Sky Ridge. Four and a half to go here, opening half. 22-15. Jory for three. That one off the mark. Gets his own rebound. Boy, that's the kind of hustle that Sky Ridge needs right now. Yeah, so now you're going to see this 1-2-2 action by Sky Ridge where they want to kind of slow pace, and they're not really trying to get turnovers. They're just trying to slow it down a little. Wow, it's a good take. Yeah, step through just missed a couple times there by Eaton, but he draws the whistle. Yeah, you'll see Sky Ridge try to, to retreat a little bit better um, moving forward. They don't want to give up layups. They just want to take that shot clock down to – 25 or 20 before they can get into their offense. Two free throws here for Eaton. Good on the first. As this is probably the most impressive individual performance we've seen of the night or of the day. Two for two on the trip. Seventeen for Jordan Eaton. Left. Three on the way. No. Little freshman gets off a good shot. Had a good look there. 
You're going to see a lot of that action with Sky Ridge where they, they hit the high post on the elbow, and they love to do that misdirection down screen to a handoff for threes. Sent out to Taylor, that three off the mark, and a loose ball foul here going to go against Crimson Cliffs. We'll have one-on-one -on -one free throws coming up here for Sky Ridge. Pretty crazy that Jordan Eaton has scored the same number of points as Sky Ridge in yeah. his first half. Yeah, I think, you know, going into halftime, you, you know, Coach Gardner's going to have to come up with something else to try to get him out of his groove. And, I, you know, I don't know how many offensive boards he already has, but uh, he's getting on the glass where you got to get him to not get offensive rebounds. What would you do, Coach, in this kind of situation? How would, how would you try to combat his impact? I'd get the most annoying defender on my bench or if he's a starter, and I would never leave his side. I'd be in his back pocket the whole time and try to be a little bit more annoying where, like, if he's off the ball like he is right now, you have somebody right in his in his jersey. Just kind of riding the hip the whole yep, game? Yep. You can't give him much space because the space that they've given him, he's taken advantage of it. Well, that's been one of the things that surprised me, and I don't say this as Chris as, as all. I'm not a coach, but it feels like Crimson Cliffs has found a lot of space at the three-point line really this entire first half. Yeah, they've had some opportunities, and they've taken advantage of them, and I think the the great thing about coaching is good coaches see that and they'll make the adjustments as a nice little push hook there by Crimson. That's Feltz with his first bucket of the night. We talked about his impact defensively, now impacting offensively. Going right at him, tough take. And nice a make. little left-handed push hook. Here comes that 1-2-2. Two, two. They just need to back up just a little bit, not be so aggressive here. Got their guys way too high. Here's Eaton. He's looking for Feltz. Couldn't give him the basketball. They'll go to the wing. Now entry and foul here from behind. It's going to be called on Hanson. That'll be the fifth team foul. You know, that's a that's a good call by, by Courtney there on the block. You see this a lot on the when someone's posting up and their defender is poking from behind and trying to get a deflection. It's bad. It's not legal guarding position. I like that kind of a call. Might be the first time I've ever heard you applaud a call i'm, I'm just kidding i see you applaud a lot for copper yeah so. i'm not gonna i'm not gonna huh. say it very often <laughs> turned over here by crimson cliffs i'll tell you as impressive of a half as it's been from eaton skirts they're still hanging around as jory here that three might have been deflected yeah yeah, you know, you look at that as a coach sometimes where you're like, we didn't play very well this first half, and you see him at halftime, and you make some adjustments, and you're right there in the game. Feltz couldn't corral that. The Falcons coming up the floor, deflected out there by Eaton. Inside of two to go. There's that backside, you know, Crimson Cliffs. Has their inbounder right on there. I like to have them a little bit deeper under the hoop just to really protect that backside because that's where all our coaches here in Utah are trying to get buckets off the backside. Given back to Fryans who had the inbound. Oh. Yes. Davis Fryans hitting the three, and it is back to a one-possession contest. Oh, they find Feltz inside. Too strong. He thought there was contact there. Oh. Coming through, handoff. And that one turned over. Missed opportunity there for Skyridge. Yeah, uh, usually you see a travel on, on those calls, right? That's why he kind of got rid of the ball so fast. You know, some, some officials are different. If you can roll around, do a gator roll, or if you just fall down, is it a travel? So it seems like he kind of rushed that to get rid of it. Crimson up the floor here. Taylor the drive. Left it short. Crimson, the offense kind of cooling off here. Yeah, I think that one, two, two, three-quarter court. Uh-oh. Well, that step back for Jory was close. Yeah, that full court action there has really helped Skyridge kind of slow him down as they get in transition right there. Nice reverse finish there for Luke Johnson.
This Crimson defense continues to hound as Johnson hits the floor. We play on. Jory gives that to Jensen. Back to J.J. for three. There it is. I think that's a big shot for J.J. He had missed a couple threes. Yeah. That gives him a little more confidence again here late in the first half. Yep. He got his feet under him and was ready to shoot. A rare miss for Eaton. Good Hunter. push up the floor. And a foul call here on Trevor Taylor. Yeah, I mean, it's a two-point game with 13 seconds left, and I don't, you know, I feel like Skyridge hasn't played their best basketball up to this point, but Crimson's kind of died off here the last four minutes offensively. Yeah. Ah, first free throw strong again. A couple opportunities haven't been seized at the line here this evening. Yeah, nothing's more frustrating than missing free throws. You know, as a coach, you're just on the sideline sitting there going, oh, my goodness, how many free throws do we shoot on a weekly basis? we got to make shots. One for two on the trip. Ten seconds left here. Skipped over for Taylor and broken up by Davis. Yeah, I think Crimson's got to go into halftime trying to figure out how to how to exploit that 1-2-2. Two, two. Now S- Sky Ridge is in a 1-3-1. One, one. Pass is deflected. The heave oh. just off the mark. Boy, it looked like Crimson had this game. A good closeout by Sky Ridge to finish off the first half. It's a one-point contest at the break. Crimson Cliffs leading Sky Ridge 28-27. You're watching the Sky Ridge Tournament on kslsports.com. Welcome back. Start of the second half. Dean Stewart, Andrew Blanchard with you. What has been a great game. Skyridge and Crimson Cliffs, one-point game for the Mustangs. And, boy, good take inside. McWillis able to score it at an and-one opportunity. Yeah, not a great start for Skyridge. You know, they, they drop a play to take the lead, and they throw it away. They come, you know, Crimson comes down and gets an and-one. So, definitely not the start Jeff wanted. Uh, in the second half. Coach, you mentioned a couple things near the end of that first half. One, Crimson was going to have to figure out how to deal with that 1-2-2. Two, two. We'll get to that later. But for Skyridge, I mean, what do you look to do defensively? Because Jordan Eaton really didn't get the same number of looks in the back half of that second quarter. Did you see them kind of treat him differently at all, or would you make any adjustments? Yeah, I'd make minor adjustments there. Um, but right now it seems like they're doing okay with it. Anything you do to free up Jory, he's really been like the X factor for this Skyridge offense. Well, it looks like they just tried to run a play right there where they, it's kind of a hammer play where you come back to the to the ball on a hammer screen, and then number one there just slipped. Uh, Mason Hunter slipped to the basket and got a good look. So I think they're going to use him, but they're going to use him sometimes as a decoy to get to the rim. Two for two on the trip to the line for Hunter. Skyridge not showing that 1-2-2 two, two here, but that question teed up, Coach. We'll get to that uh, as it's applicable in this second half. I'm sure it will be. I think it will. Here's Taylor giving with Eaton. He had 17 in the first half, a remarkable first half for Jordan Eaton. McWillis playing with three. Tough shot won't go, and Hunter gets the board. Davis into the corner. That brought out by Jory. Good Good tough take. take and one for Mason Hunter. It's a good downhill drive, good finish with the left hand. You know, we talk about the first half for Jory. He had four threes, he had 14 points, but Mason Hunter is their scoring leader coming into the game, averaging 12 per game, and he has seemed to be much more aggressive offensively in this third quarter. Yeah, you know, and and I think Mason's put in his time here at Sky Ridge, you know, as a senior now, uh, starting to get his his looks now. It's good to see. Aggressive defense there by Hanson. He's still up on the ball. Here's Johnson, that double team backing out for Sky Ridge. I still think Sky Ridge could be a little bit tighter on Eaton here. That's just way too much space. And he makes him pay. Yeah, I think that Josh Davis on Skyridge has got to got to close that space just a little bit more to make him feel uncomfortable. 
little back door. Hard to make those plays of jumping off two feet and throwing it in the air. Typically on those back doors, you want a little bounce pass. Here comes that slip play again. Um, right there, nice little look. Contact there, and that's going to be number four on Phoenix McWillis. A big call here early in the third quarter. See right there, they ran that slip play. They up screen, and, the, and they're just banking on Crimson to switch. And so, um, you know, he slips there, but number three, Josh Davis, kind of dropped off. His man helped. He could have stayed on that block to get a wide open layup. He would have just stayed in that spot. McWillis going to head to the bench. That's one of their top scorers would be out for what will be a good chunk of time. I mean, Coach, when would you bring him back? Six yeah, that's a, in the fourth? That's a big hit. Um, it just depends on how what the what the score is. But um, if he's if he's a big-time player for my, my team, I bring him in, yeah, fourth quarter, six minutes, maybe five minutes, just depending on the score. Crimson going to have to figure out a way without him. They've had this man all game. It's Johnson... Trying to work here, lost it. Good deflection. Here comes that handoff. Usually they bring a ball screen right there. Comes Princeton action for the handoff. Good switch Good. there on Jory. Yeah, that was a great take. And yeah, they're not going to let him come off that little down screen and get threes. He's already got how many threes he got? <laughs> Four threes. Here's Taylor. Jory. Boy, long jumper here. Missed everything. Batted up and around. Johnson able to corral it. It's good A little deep. fade away. Now this is kind of what plagued Skyridge in the first half. I mean, they just gave him three extra yeah. possessions there. And that's the thing. I mean... How do you how do you combat that? I mean, it's been an offensive rebounding decisive edge for Crimson. I mean, is, they say rebounding is about desire, and you see games where, you know, there's a 5'9 or a 6-foot guard that leads the team in rebounding. So there's an element of truth to that, but also fundamentally, like, how do you combat a team that is just owning offensive glass? Yeah, you know, those are usually strengths of a team. You know, some teams, their strength is is anticipating misses and getting in there and being physical it's just, it's a physical game when the ball's in the air and so uh instead of being a spectator and watching the ball in the air you got to go find somebody and put a body on them sweet and missed them both can't give crimson or excuse me crimson had the lead my bad we can't extend the lead <clears throat> here's hunter a drive into take. traffic and one and one cannon jensen with the aggressive drive and finish. You're going to see a little bit of a defensive change here for Skyridge coming up. Uh, maybe a 1-3-1 one, one is what I may have seen, so we'll see what, what they're going to do to adjust. Yeah, so they're going to come up. Yep, little 1-2-1-1 little one, one, one. being aggressive, which I like. That's great, D. I mean, so, Coach, how do you combat that? Because we talked about the 1-2-2. Yeah. Now you got a 1-3-1. How do you try to combat that pressure that Skyridge is going to bring? Yeah, you just got to get your guys in the right spot. I usually get two guys up top, one in the middle, and two back, and then we look to, to push it over the top of them. Now it looks like they're going back to their 1-2-2. And, again, this is not for turnovers. This is for pace. Yeah. And if they get a turnover, great. Because I had the conversation, even with the shot clock now, if you make them take eight, nine seconds getting the ball at the fort, now you only got 25, 26 to execute, yeah. right? So it shortens down the time that they have on the offensive end. And an and one opportunity here for Crimson Cliffs. Another offensive rebound. Failed to mention that last foul that was called on Crimson Cliffs a minute or so ago was on Trevor Taylor, and that was his third. So you have individual fouls. He'll come off here as a... Uh, Again, a couple of contributors for the Mustangs playing or having to sit with foul trouble. Sweeten left it short. Not a great free throw shooting night, it no. feels like. Coach, is that something where you're running sprints or is it just, hey, we <laughs> got to 
change, you know, the way that we're practicing free throws or the number of takes we're taking? Or yeah, I think a lot of times what I do when my team struggle at the free throw line is is just in practice. Uh, while you're doing drills that are up and down, you stop that drill at the end of it, and you do a one-on-one uh, type drill so that they have to shoot free throws where they're pressure and um, you're tired. Yeah. You know, that's the biggest thing. That deflected good hands there by Sweeten, but Skyridge still with it, can't get it to go. Offensive rebound blocked away by Johnson. Toss it to his knees, and there's going to be the traveling violation. Now, there's that travel call, yeah. you know, that yeah. you just never know when when they're going to call it. And even there, there was a little bit of a delay, right? It's like, <laughs> yep. are they going to call it? <laughs> they did. Now, Crimson with a little pressure. Well broken here by Skyridge. Boy, tough drive. Good verticality there by, Bar- by Sweeten. Worked oh, back. Screen. Second made three of the ball game for Davis Fryens. Little freshman's growing up. Looking really good. Skyridge with the three point lead. Sent over with Johnson, Luke. Good defense as that shot clock down to five. Yeah. And a foul here on the floor. As they say, contact there by Cannon Jensen. This has got to be a state record of non-charging calls. They've only called one (laughs) charge in this game. And it's got to be, I'm going to ask, I'm going to look at the record books. But there's got to be, that's got to be a record for Utah. (laughs) of course i think a lot of that is because you've had some great guards go through your time at copper hills and i know you've been on the wrong side of a couple of those calls you're probably still hearkening back to i would guess oh yeah absolutely three on the way and good big shot nice response there for steel barbin his first field goal of the night ties us up at 39 with Jensen. Here's Hunter leaving it. High post. Trying to get that to Hanson. It's a good finish. Good pass. Well, they worked the shot clock all the way down yeah. there and had good movement. Oh, another one. A little fake by Luke. Opened up the three. Another offensive rebound gathered here by Crimson. You know, you just haven't really seen Jordan Eaton getting the ball too much no. this quarter. He needs to insert himself a little bit more if had, Crimson's going to have a chance. He had eight points in the first quarter, nine in the second quarter, just three here in the third. Oh, how about the volley, there literally, to Eaton? <laughs> Ninety seconds to go here in the third. Skipped out, Fryans again, off the front of the rim, tapped good out. Good look, it's good action off the post. Those are the kind of threes you want to take. And he's hit that shot tonight, right? I mean, that's a great look if you're Coach yep. Gardner. And they'll bring T- Taylor back on again, having the three. Cannon Jensen on the floor for Skyridge as well. I believe he's got three. Back to Eaton in the paint. Contact. Yep. You talk about being more aggressive and trying to insert yourself exactly what their leading scorer does there. Yeah, you know, uh, Skyridge was high high hedging on that ball screen, and he had a good pick and roll and got to the rim and tried to finish strong. First free throw here for Jordan Eaton. 
He's got a soft touch from the free throw line. He just, he does not look like the way he plays, right? Yeah. Like you see him and you're like, oh, he's probably just a bit of a bruiser. Yeah. It's like, no, like this kid has some finesse and he's got some range. And I mean, like he's he's a really good ball player. Yeah, I've been impressed with his, his play tonight. Crimson back in front. Give him another one. Bryant's oh. ooh, rimmed out. Offensive board. And whistle here. The contact there. Going to be called on Barbin. Another good take. No, they called that on Taylor. And that is number four on Taylor. It's decision time now. You can see a little stress with the coach. And looking like he's going to bring Sweeten on here. Well, he kind of put the hands up to the face like, oh, man. Two significant contributors sitting on the bench in foul trouble, and Phoenix McWillis just had the, I get it, man. <laughs> Both with four. Worked out with Hunter. And whistle here, the hand check, the call. And that'll be the sixth team foul on Crimson's. Both teams with six team fouls. We'll be shooting free throws both ways the rest of the way. You know, when you when you get as old as Jeff Gardner is now in this game and coaching and playing and that he had, you know, you start to, to coach your one some of your best friend's kids. I'm pretty sure Jeff coaches number one, Mason Hunter. That's one of Jeff's good buddies. So it's funny to see how this happens. When, yeah. When you're in the game this long, you start coaching your friend's kids. Well, pretty t- cool experience. You, you see Coach Gardner there, top of your screen. And just kind of squatted down. I can't do that. And I think Coach no. Gardner's a lot older than I am. I'm like, man, I don't know how you can literally sit there like that. Like, well, and, I'd be falling over. And, of course, he's doing it outside the box. I mean, come on, Jeff. Get your butt in the box, would you? <laughs> nice take there by Hunter. Oh. oh, how about the answer? A big time made three by Eaton to close out the quarter. And Crimson Cliffs holds a three-point lead. Fourth quarter coming your way next. Don't go anywhere. We got a good finish coming up. Welcome back. Start of the fourth quarter. Dane Sewer, Andrew Blanchard with you. Coach, my goodness. Jordan Eaton, 27 points. He had seven points in the last 90 seconds of that third quarter. I mean, he's got to be the best player that I didn't know about. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and and he's really unassuming. You look at him and you don't think that he can he can make those shots that he's making. So it's really cool to see that. And and I don't mean that to come across as arrogant. I know about a lot of basketball players. There are players I certainly don't know about. I did not know about this kid. Yeah. And I cannot even say how impressive he's been tonight. And there's Luke Johnson dialing up a three and Cripps and Cliffs pushing the lead to six. Those are two big threes, the one at the end of the quarter and then to start. Uh, to get a six-point lead, it's tough. There's that fake handoff. Oh, boy, I thought might have had a different call there. Instead, they called the arm coming across the wrist there. Sweeten picking it up, second personal. I actually think that was a good call. You know, he was coming across to his left, but he had the ball in his right hand. Um, if he shot that with his left hand, he probably wouldn't have gotten fouled. But First free throw for Jensen, good. Can we just get rid of the coach's box, though? I mean, no one pays attention to it or actually follows the rule. I, Let's just go to half court all the way to the baseline. I was joking today because we saw it in the first game, the Harriman game. It was being enforced, and I was like, I don't remember the last time I actually saw anybody enforce the coach's box. <laughs> Literally, like, one bench had to move their coaches around to allow the head coach chair to be in the box. It was so weird. I, I remember in a playoff game, it was a Final Four game I'm at, when I'm at Copper Hills, and the, the official comes up and said, hey, we've talked about it. You need to stay in your box. And I said to him, there's no way in uh, heavens I'm going to stay in this box. So do what you will, but I'm not going to be in it. And they didn't team me up. It was great. Wow. (laughs) You know, this whole time I've been saying that the NFHS makes rules. No, Andrew Blanchard makes rules. (laughs) That's breaking news here on KSL Sports. 
Hey, that coaching box is is it's a recommendation. You know, it's not really a rule. <laughs> it's more of a guideline yeah. than anything else. Yeah, no one follows it. Uh, yeah. Well, and and that was the funny thing. And look, I, Coach Gummersall got you know teed up in the first game today, and he was told you got to stay in your box. And immediately he was like, the other coach isn't in the box. Yep. And uh, and that's why it became a talking point in that first game. And look, I mean, crafty move by Lance, right? Like, <laughs> all right, if that's what we're going to talk about, then. Let's talk about it, right? And Absolutely. So, Another tough look for Eaton there. Yeah. Good defense on the interior. Skyridge pushing it. Two-point contest. Drive here. Nice Jensen. strong move. Ties it up. It was a six-point difference. And how about the spurt here from Skyridge to draw even? Just way too much space. He's got to get up in his in his shorts a little bit more. Another offensive rebounds. I mean, they're just living yeah. at the rim right now. And the crazy thing is that Eaton got three of his own misses. Yeah. Way too many opportunities. Two-point lead back to the Mustangs. Hunter. Over with Davis. Davis boy being kind of bodied away. It's good tall defense. Not giving anything away. Just getting your hands up and getting a rebound. Oh boy. Eaton. A wise deflection there. Almost had Dane Housley off to the races. And a an, uh, foul here. I was going to say offensive. I saw a uh, crimson body hit the deck and got a little twisted there. We'll have free throws coming up here for the Mustangs. Foul called on Hunter. Coach Gardner wanted a charge there, wanted his player to take one. Just called on the shot. Two free throws here for Johnson. First one coming off. Yeah, you've got to make these free throws in the fourth quarter. You just can't you can't afford to miss any free throws in tight games like this on the road. One of two on the trip. And a timeout taken by Crimson Cliffs. Timeout Mustangs. We'll be back. You're watching KSL Sports Rewind's coverage of the Skyridge basketball trailing by three. 52-49. You know, I look over on that Skyridge bench and you got Longtime assistant Alex Stoddard with Jeff, who, who is who's been at Mountain View, Brighton, and Skyridge. He had surgery on his elbow because he wanted to be the Turkey Trot champion in football. Um, and I had to remind him he's getting kind of old for that. Uh -oh. Long three. Ooh, Ooh that's a big three. It's a good look for Jory. Batted around, and Crimson has it. Great play out of the timeout for. For Sky Ridge just didn't fall. So are you saying that was a turkey bowl injury? Yeah, turkey bowl injury for Coach Stoddard. Um, needs to re remember he's in his 40s now. Oh, great cut. Oh, good find. Too strong. And an important clear there for Jory and the Falcons. Coming up. And Davis there drawing the contact. So Josh Davis will head to the line here to shoot one and one. And that the ninth team foul. That the ninth team foul. So this is the uh, last one and one. Yeah, going to be in the double bonus the rest of the game. Got to get to the rim. Good on the first. One more here for Josh. Another full court press coming. Nope, not off the make. Yep, back into a 2-3 zone it looks like for Sky Ridge. Eaton's got to find some space. They put him at the, the elbow. He's got to find some space to hit a three. Oh, tough call on Sky Ridge. Yeah, it's going to go against Hanson. You know, you asked me a question, I gave you a quick answer, and then I was like, actually, I don't think that's right. I think Josh Davis 
does play football. There's a Josh Davis on the roster. Yeah, and I'm he, presuming that's him. He looks like he's got a you know a football build there and plays physical and is a tough player. Uh, well, we're on the topic. How do you feel about multi-sport athletes? Yeah, I mean it's 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 important to try to have as many as you can. You know, in this day and age, though, it's really difficult for certain sports to share the other the the player. <laughs> so you know, like. For example, for basketball, basketball and football players are it works really well. Whereas basketball and baseball, it's not as great of a cuz we share that summer time and spring. Nice take inside there by Hansen. He's got 9. Wow. Good yeah, night. but when you can get these guys in that play football or other sports into a basketball gym, it's definitely a helpful thing. Oh, good find inside good by Eaton. This is going to come down to the end here. Both teams playing pretty good on the offensive end. Now you see Crimson bringing in their 2-2-1 three-quarter to try to get some deflections, and looks like they're going back to man-to-man. And probably fortunate there that Sky was able to retain it. it. looked like they were in some trouble. Yeah. You've got to think Skyridge is going to have a backdoor play coming. There's a slip. Oh, man, I don't know how he got a shot away. It looked like he was in trouble underneath the yeah. backboard and did a great job to recover, and it'll be Hanson back to the line here. These are big-time free throws. you got to put these in down in crunch time. Makes the first. Jory going to come off here. Cannon Jensen coming on for Coach Gardner. Looks like they're just trying to get Jory just to maybe 30 seconds to a minute of rest just to come down and finish off the game. He hit three threes in the first, four in the first half. And he's not hit a three in the second half. Boy, big burst there, tapped out, gathered by Barbin. Yeah, Crimson has been so tough on the offensive glass. Man. Another soft touch. And great ball movement there, too, huh? Quick on target, and Eaton scores his 29th. All Good the way take. to the rim for Hunter. Always loved coaching lefties. They're just so much fun to coach because, they're you know, you just don't see it as much. And at Copper Hills, heck, I had like four lefties yeah. um, at one time. It's so much fun to have them. They're hard to guard. 2-3 zone here. Little smash screen there in the middle. Didn't end up working. Good There's... contest there. And it'll go to Skyridge. How about the defense there by Jensen? Hand right, right in the shot. Yep, that was great D and got fortunate in not giving up that offensive rebound too. As Jory comes back in, looks like he got his 45 seconds of rest and now he's going to finish out this game. Double bonus the rest of the way for Skyridge. One more one and one opportunity for Crimson and coming to the table is Phoenix McWillis. Remember, came out with about six and a half to go in the third after he picked oh, up his fourth foul. that slip again with Hunter. Uh, wow, what a great play. They fake that hammer screen coming back to the strong side, and Hunter just slips it. It's a great, great look. I love that play. And a timeout taken by Crimson Cliffs as the Falcons have taken the lead. 2.25 to go. Don't go anywhere. We got a great finish when we come back. 58-57 Skyridge. Whew. Back and forth battle. I mean, it's felt like... Crimson Cliffs kind of taking a hold, and Skyridge comes back, and Crimson Cliffs takes a hold, and Skyridge comes back. Here comes a heavy dose of Jordan Eaton, I think. He's going to get the ball in a, in a scoring position against this 2-3 zone. Looks like maybe they moved. Oh, they're back to man. Yeah. Drive here, and the foul. Boy, Hunter was right there defensively, and they say he came across the hands there. And so we'll have free throws coming up for Steel Barbin. 
You know, Skyridge has made free throws the last couple times they've been to the line. It's helped them get back in this contest. They've made five free throws in this fourth quarter alone. Yeah, that's big, you know, in the fourth quarter, like we talked about earlier. You just got to be able to hit those free throws. Marvin ties it up. Jory back on the floor here for the Falcons. Looks like what Jeff's doing with with uh, Josh Davis and Jory is is offensive defensive substitutions. They want Jory in to be a threat offensively, but uh, bring in bring in the big number three, Josh Davis, to try to defend. Two for two on the trip there by Steele. Crimson a little confused on their switching. Here comes yeah. that hammer back for Jory. Ooh, got a good look, but couldn't make it, and it's eaten with the rebound. Skipped over. Left. Johnson the three. Ooh. Rattled out. Wow. But an and one opportunity. How about another offensive rebound by Steel Barbin? And he'll head to the line here for the old fashioned three point play. Yeah, I think that's going to be something that's a little bad taste in Coach Gardner's mouth of giving up so many offensive rebounds. Time out, Skyridge. Welcome yeah, back. Amazing. Dane Stewart, Andrew Blanchard with you. Offensive rebounds. I mean, Crimson Cliffs, we've seen possessions, three, four, five shots. Yeah. Another one here with an opportunity for Barbin. Gets the putback and a chance to put him up by four. Yeah, they're just momentum killers, right? Like, you have to be able to secure a rebound and be able to get out in, in transition. And when you give up offensive rebounds, it really deflates uh, your offensive game. Barbin has made his last three free throws, and it is a four-point lead. All right, Coach, where do you go here if you're Skyridge? They've had looks some good like, looks. Yeah, it looks like they're going to that down screen. A oh, little fake by Hunter. It's good action. How about the recovery by Eaton? It looks like it's set up beautifully for Hanson, but Eaton coming from behind and getting the block. Yep. All right, he's going to get some action here on the out-of-bounds play. We'll stay here. we got another game coming up for you. One more, our nightcap, Alta and Copper Hills. Coach, have you seen Alta yet this year? Uh, no, I just saw him this summer um, with the new addition with Riser. Um, and then, you know, the, the two bigs, they're really good. they got a really balanced team. Uh, looking forward to seeing them tonight to see how they progress through the, the fall. You know, spent a lot of time at Copper Hills. I know you're still familiar with that staff. We won't ask you to give us any trade secrets. But anything just on paper when you look at that game that you think is going to be an interesting factor? Well, yeah, I mean... <clears throat> I've been able to see Hymas play quite a bit, and that dude can play. He's one of my favorite players I've been able to see. He's just so structured, fundamental, can shoot it, can ba can bang inside. Just love the way he's playing. I feel like he's um, grown a little bit of a dog in him this year, too, where he's been oh, like, oh, sure. no, we're done, right? Like where he's been a little more of a, a leader stepping up and being like, someone's got to make a play, I'm going to go out and make it. It's been awesome to see him take that next step in his progression. Absolutely. Quick three off the oh. inbound. Mason Hunter. Well, I'm pretty sure that's not what they drew up, but the, he didn't come out and guard him. So, you know, Ethan or uh, Mason just put it down. 15 for Mason, 14 oh. of them in the second half. Eaton, that shot won't big go, rebound. and Hunter with the board. Yeah, big rebound by Mason Hunter there. Boy, huge plays for the senior. Oh, push, back door, back door right here. Oh, so Eaton wasn't going to fall for it. Uh, they are trying to back door um, Mason Hunter. Inside of a minute to go. Hanson. There's that same slip play. Great action. They've scored at least six points on that play tonight. Hunter has nine in the fourth, 18 in the game. That's why it's so hard to go against Jeff Gardner teams. Three on the way, oh. won't go. Offensive Eaton. rebound, Eaton. Because they can execute you to death. And you make one little mistake, they can they can get a layup on you. We've got whistles here. A timeout being taken by Coach Gardner. Wow, how about the resolve of Skyridge to come back? They've got the ball. Shot clock turned off. 26 seconds left. Coach, do you take the last shot here? Um, 
I don't. I, I try to get a good one, and that way we can foul if we get a miss here. So I'm probably going pretty quick here. I can see uh, Coach Gardner trying to do some sort of uh, high post catch here with a fake handoff. He's been doing that a few times tonight um, with their bigs. If you're in the Crimson Cliffs huddle right now, what are you coaching your team to do on this last possession? Anything that you say, hey, be aware of that slip? Or, I mean, what, what's your focus? Yeah, I think I think he's definitely got to talk about that slip and if they're going to switch it or not. It looks like they're switching that play, and so the switcher is just getting behind the play. So I might throw a wrinkle here if I was Crimson and, and get into a 2-3 zone. And then once they set, get a new play in, then go back to man just to kind of mess mm-hmm. with them um, to kind of draw some of the clock out. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they go to a, a different defensive set. They're 26, deep into this corner. 26 seconds left. Skyridge basketball. Yeah, it looks like they're going 2-3 zone. Yeah, they're 2-3. So the good wrinkle here by Crimson. A lot of times when you leave the the huddle, you give two plays anyways. Oh, big turnover. And that one turned over and a foul called on Hunter. And it's Barbin coming up with a big defensive play for the Mustangs. And that's the fifth on Mason Hunter. How many timeouts does Sky Ridge have? I don't know, but this (laughs) this is a foul out timeout. Yes, it is. Boy, what a game for Hunter. I know he's walking off disappointed with that last foul and with that play, but unofficially 18 points for him, 17 in the second half. Made critical plays to help get them back in this game, including rebounds. But right now he's going to have to rely on his teammates to close this one out. Now, didn't you say he made four, five free throws in a row now at this point? Uh, Barbin is three of four from the line unofficially in this fourth. Uh-oh. Hey, it's back iron. That's what you like to see as a coach. You know, obviously, he's not scared of the moment. 14, good touch. 14 seconds left. Barbin rattles in the second. Two-point contest. Okay, now, now watch a PG play. Watch a hammer screen to a throw off the baseline. Here it comes. There it is. Sent out. Three on the way. Oh. Won't go. Foul. Eaten with the Got rebound. And the foul given with 2.2 left. will walk down and take free throws. A great look for Cannon Jensen. Yeah, it was a great look. You know, it's an often, oftentimes, uh, you know, that play kind of came from Coach McAllister. We all kind of stole it and called it PG. Uh, looks like they did a little bit higher this time. It was a great look, a great backside hammer screen. Uh, just didn't make it. Eaton unofficially with 31, make it 32. And he ain't, he's not going to miss free throws. I mean, you can just see how comfortable he is at that free throw line. I mean, that one's nothing but net. Yeah. Game on the line, right? Yeah, Jeez. I mean, as smooth as can be. <clears throat> Thirty second timeout. So, you know, coach is just telling them, everyone back, no fouls, don't guard anybody. Because a lot of times what Coach Gardner is doing is he wants to have a um, uh, someone mow over a screener as you're shooting a three. Um, so right now, Crimson really just wants to back off and literally be a, a stationary cone defensively. Well, because the tough thing is in high school, clock does not stop after a made bucket. So you can hit a three-quarter court shot. There's only two seconds left. It doesn't matter. Yeah. They don't have to inbound it. Ball game's over. Absolutely. Skyridge learned that lesson in the playoffs, I think, three years ago against Lone Peak. Yeah. That was... Not a fun lesson for the Falcons. No, no yeah, if you, you've got to use those timeouts, and, and sometimes you just run out of them to stop that clock. It's, it's you know, part of the game. Coach, what has impressed you most tonight about what we've seen in this ballgame? Well, game? I mean, obviously Eaton, kid that we not, neither of us have heard of, um, senior play, and he's just been tough as nails off the offensive rebound. I don't, I don't believe he's missed a free throw. He shot a high clip at the three-point line. Just really impressive. However, Skyridge has shown a lot of toughness in coming back and and trying to get into the game. And they've had their opportunities. Just seems like they're going to fall a little short tonight. 
Skyridge will have it. Have to go the full length of the floor, trailing by four. To your point, there's really just one play in the playbook, and that's getting fouled on a three. The heave. You called it. <laughs> Official's not going to bite on it, and that'll do it. 67-63, Crimson Cliffs gets the big win. Coach, final thoughts on a player of the game? Yeah, obviously, Eaton's got to be the, the player of the game. Really impressed. Um, really, really fun to watch him play. And, you know, he didn't, he, he didn't, it wasn't spectacular as far as showy or anything. That He just is a blue-collar type player. Some of the players that I love to coach um, are like him. So congratulations to him. He played amazing. Tournament continues for both teams tomorrow. Uh, Skyridge will face the loser of our next game. Crimson, the winner of the next game. That next game out to Copper Hills coming up right here in 15 minutes. Don't go anywhere. We got a good one in the nightcap. Crimson Cliffs, 67-63 over Skyridge. For Andrew Blanchard, my name is Dane Stewart. Thanks, and we'll see you for game number four in just a bit.